this video, I am going to show you how to install and use a virtual machine. A virtual machine is basically an operating system running inside a host operating system, whether it be Windows or Mac OS or Ubuntu. Today, I'm going to show you how to install specifically an Ubuntu Linux virtual machine using a piece of software called VirtualBox. VirtualBox is available for Linux, Mac, and Windows, so you're virtually in luck. Terrible pun. Without any further ado, let's get to it. Hi guys. So in this video, we are going to install VirtualBox. Uh, VirtualBox is the application that will allow us to create and use virtual machines. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to open our web browser. Go to www.virtualbox.org and you'll see this huge button right here. Click that, download VirtualBox. From there you will see several different options. You'll see an option to download VirtualBox for Windows, OS X, or Linux. And depending on your operating system, you just choose which one is right for you. For me, it's OS X. So I click that and it'll download something right there. Then what I do is I go to the install file, click it, and wait for it to load. Now you have the VirtualBox installer open. And if you're on a Mac, you have to click this VirtualBox.pkg icon. If you're on Windows, the wizard will open for you automatically. Right here is the wizard. All you got to do is click continue, install, put in your password. The wizard does everything else for you. Now we're going to start up VirtualBox for the first time. Here is VirtualBox and as you can see I have some previous virtual machines loaded here. You will not have that and that's fine. We're going to create an Ubuntu Linux virtual machine today. So we go down and click Linux from the option Ubuntu 64-bit. If you have a 64-bit system, you can also choose 32-bit. And if you choose not to use Ubuntu and maybe use a different Linux distribution, you can also choose the specific distribution from this list that you have. In our case, we're going to use Ubuntu 18.04, and we're going to press Continue. It asks us to select the amount of memory in megabytes to be allocated for the virtual machine. Uh, the recommended memory is 1024 megabytes. 1024 megabytes is the equivalent of a gigabyte. That should be good enough for Ubuntu, to be honest. So we're just going to continue. And it says to create a virtual hard disk. Just create one. And you have these different options uh, for virtual hard disks. Just go with the first one, VDI. I always choose a dynamically allocated hard disk, meaning that it will only use your hard disk space as it fills up whereas a fixed size will actually have a fixed amount of space that you can use for a virtual operating system. So I'm going to give it a little bit more than 10 gigabytes. We're going to say 20 gigabytes and create that. We've got this virtual machine created. Now that we have our virtual machine created, we still need an operating system to run on this virtual machine. Since we're going to install Ubuntu, we're going to need to use an Ubuntu image. In order to do that, you go to www.ubuntu.com. From this website, we are going to download an image, in this case, Ubuntu 18.04. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use the Ubuntu desktop version and just click download right there. It's going to give you an option to donate, but you don't have to do that. And now it's downloading Ubuntu. This will take a little while, so just be patient. Once your file is downloaded, the ISO file, you should go take a look at where it was saved. My file was saved in the downloads folder. Reopen VirtualBox and start up Ubuntu. So right here, you're going to get asked for a specific virtual disk file. Click that file button and in your downloads folder or wherever you saved your ISO image to, you should see that image. Click on that and press start. Wait for it to load now. If you see a boot splash screen like this, that means everything was successful. Press English. Try Ubuntu without installing, or you also have the option to install Ubuntu. Just go click install Ubuntu unless you actually want to try it beforehand. And voila, it is loading. 
Now that we're at the installer, we have to choose certain preferences. Select the keyboard that you want. If you're in the United States, obviously you'll most likely want English. So I just press continue. Select a normal installation. Select download updates while installing. I don't recommend install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media. Oftentimes, proprietary firmware can mess around with this installation, so don't check that. Press continue after that install and click continue to continue with the installation from there now all you have to do is select where you are you don't have to put an exact location just as long as you get the time zone and now you just select your name username password press continue and after this, we basically just wait for this installation to finish. Now the installation is complete and we just click the restart now button. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go to optical drives and the, remove the disk from the virtual drive. Force unmount and let that load. So now Ubuntu is restarting. So now our virtual machine is 100% set up. However, I do recommend that you install the VirtualBox Guest Editions, which will help you make full use of your hardware for the virtual machine. And in order to do that, you just click on your Devices menu and click Insert Guest Editions CD Image. And once that is inserted, you will see a dialog box. Just click Run. And then enter your password. And you authenticate. And voila, you're done. To apply those settings, all you gotta do is restart your system. So just go here to machine and then reset. And voila, everything will be configured for you, including the guest editions. So now we have a full working Ubuntu system running within Mac OS. If you like this video, guys, give it a like and a subscribe. If you didn't like this video, give it a dislike. And be sure to comment so that I know what I'm doing right and what I can change in the future. Thank you guys for tuning into this video and stay tuned for more videos on Ubuntu, Linux, other tutorials and reviews.